If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to the Social Media Addicts Podcast on the phillytech.org netcast network. Sponsorship provided by Get Flywheel, optimized WordPress hosting at getflywheel.com, wistia.com at w-i-s-t-i-a.com, and Zoho Mail. Hey everybody, and welcome to Social Media Addicts episode number 21. 21! We're now allowed to drink legally. Uh, I'm Seth. <laughs> I am Howard. I'm ho- over and here. Jody's dealing with her dogs right now. So That's correct. A- She'll be right in here. Yes, exactly. So, Howard, before we get started, let's thank... That's you know if everyone knows that they can go support the show and the network by going to patreon.com slash Philly Tech Org. It's P A T R E O N dot com slash Philly Tech Org. Also we want to thank our sponsors, Wistia, Flywheel, and Soho Mail. You heard about them a little bit more in the down below in the in the rundown. And Jody's back. Jody, make sure you un- unmute yourself. There's yeah. Jody. We have Jody. Say hi, Jody. Hi, Jody. Hi, Jody. There you go. Jody's back from dealing with her dogs, um, and I think I have a little bit of a raspy voice, a raspy voice, because I had a cold this weekend, so go, go figure. So, so guys, this is big news. The FCC has approved net, the net neutrality regulations, meaning that they're going under Title II of the Telecommunications Act from 1932, but they're, but they're very selectively picking and choosing what they enforce. So it is a good thing. As long as they don't try and overregulate, well, what say you, Jody? Well, Howard was just starting. Go ahead, Howard. Yeah, I mean, I think about it this way: there are two main points that we have to look at from uh, net neutrality. The first thing is um, basically not letting people make backroom deals to prioritize traffic. I think that's a really good thing. It's good for startups that don't have a lot of money but do want to get their services out there. And it's also good for the really successful players, like when Netflix gets extorted to have to pay a lot of money to let their traffic through. It works really at both ends of the spectrum so that um, a carrier can no longer say, hey, here's a fast lane that you can get on for an extra fee. So that's one part. So hopefully that does its thing there and is all good. And there'll be plenty of exceptions and existing Always. deals and all that stuff. That, that's all going to be there. We know that it's going to be there. Um, the second big thing that, to look at is um, what's going to happen in terms of municipal Wi-Fi or municipal broadband, excuse me, not municipal wi- Wi-Fi, but when a township says we want to provide, we want to become an ISP, where traditionally a lot of ISPs block that legislation so the town can't run their own network. Um, so these two things are really key points to it, and yes, there's going to be 300 plus pages of exceptions and stuff, and I'll be really curious to see when all of this actually comes out and we can read it. Mm-hmm. Because right now it's not available. Right. Sorry, what say you? Um. Okay. So I think you know, from the standpoint that it levels the playing field to some extent, you know, there's there's going to be guidelines. That's a good thing. Okay, because it's going to not be necessarily the cable companies that are making the law, so to speak, it'll be um, enforced and, and regulated by the government. On the other hand, um, does that limit competition? So it's, it's a good thing. I think it's a starting point. I think what we're going to see is an evolution. I don't think that this is the end of this discussion at all. I've actually heard that before, this whole, well, the, these new regulations limit competition. There's no competition now. Most network, most most areas, you have Comcast or you have Verizon. There is no competition as it is now. I'm actually hoping that the opposite is going to happen, and there will be competition. You'll have Verizon, you'll have FiOS, then you'll have Verizon, which is FiOS. You'll have Xfinity, which is Comcast, and then you'll have these municipal broadband providers, and you'll have Google Fiber, and you'll have Time Warmer, War, Warmer, Time Warmer, Time Warner Cable. And what, have, where do you think it's going to stimulate that? 
the, the the fact that Comcast can't step on the toes anymore. I mean, they they have to open up the, the lines a little bit more now. So, and there's gonna be more regular. Yes, there's gonna be more regulation, which I'm not very happy about. I like the, I would love for the internet to have no regulations and to be completely wide open, but it isn't. Has it's proven that they haven't been able to, to play nicely. So this is what's gonna have to happen. Well, the one thing to look at is uh, realistically laying infrastructure like as a service provider, like you would lay uh, pipes for water, uh, lines for electricity. Laying infrastructure for the Internet is hard, and it's the kind of thing where it'll take a big company to do it. So it is going to take a municipality, or it'll take a company like Google. But in most areas around the country, because there's only one provider, simply give, making it available for a second provider is going to give you some competition. I actually live in an area where we've got two broadband choices. I've got Comcast and Verizon in my front yard. I can pick between one of those two, as I like to call them, evil overlords. Either one, <laughs> the prices are the same, the speeds are about the same. Every time my neighbor who's got Fio says, I just got upgraded to such and such a speed, a week later I get a letter from Comcast saying, you just got upgraded to such and such speed. It's, it's really amusing to see that because I do live in an area where there's competition. And competition. I, where there, well, it's, it's two basic monopolies. Um, but I know people who live where they only have one provider. And, you know, I'm sitting at, uh, at, at home, I think my, I have 150 down and 50 up. And it's unbelievable. And I have friends who live in areas where there's one provider, and they're like, oh, my God, I get 10 down and 2 up. And they're paying twice as much as I pay. And it's the same providers, Verizon and Comcast. So it's not a question of... Um, Ability, it's more if there's no competition, they're not going to raise the speed. So, if we could spur that on a little bit, um, also the provision, the, uh, um, the redefinition, and this isn't part of the net neutrality, but the redefinition of broadband covered under something else, where broadband is now officially 15 down and three, and I think it's either 15 down and three up or 15 down and five up. It's something that says broadband equals this. Um, I'm curious to see what that does to spur on some competition because of the marketing aspect in a truth of marketing kind of thing. Very interesting. Jerry, any last words? No, I was going to say that's a good point that Howard had. I think um, up until you know this happens, we don't really have a definition of what actually technically constitutes broadband or what you know what speeds should be defined as being high speed. You know, so it will um, to some extent create certain expectations of what, what we can expect of somebody saying that they're giving us whatever they're giving us. Like for example, like going back to um, AT&T, I have um, unlimited uh, data that's throttled at 3 gigs, but it's not supposed to be throttled, it's supposed to be unlimited, right? So oh, That's unlimited. Right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yeah. anyhow, guys, what do you guys think about Twitter video? And then do you have either either of you guys tried Twitter video out yet? I have not tried it out yet, um, but I did look at the uh, specs for embedding it on websites. Really, really straightforward. Very, very simple. Glad to see it. Um, Thirty seconds of video. Hey, no problem. Um, but you know. Be being able to put it on a website, um, it's funny because I'm actually doing these little video quick tips, and they're all running in that, uh, it's, they're running at about 35 to 50 seconds, they're all under a minute. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, if I can get these under 30, maybe I'll do all my quick tips as Twitter video, just as a, as a way to play with the medium, and not only be on YouTube or on Facebook, and just to see if I can get that on there. What about you, Jerry? I have a little bit of a problem with the concept of a 30-second video clip on Twitter. And the reason is this, okay? The way I use Twitter is um, for getting fast bits of information. It's a microblog, right? So it's as it's happening, and I'm kind of looking at the stream and figuring out what's going on, what I want to delve into deeper. I'm not going to take 30 seconds to watch a video clip. So it's just kind of counterintuitive to me to utilize Twitter to promote something that you're gonna have to sit and watch. It's the same reason that um, I don't. I have clients who insist on putting video on their website, and um, like on the home page, they think that people are gonna come and for some reason they're gonna sit there and watch a video. Well, the reality of it is, it's like a smorgasbord, right? You go to the buffet, you pick and choose what you want. I'm there for a reason. 
if your video happens to suit my reason, I might watch it. But otherwise, skip the video and and don't have it start playing and, and making noise the minute I get on the website because I'm going to oh, click off. Yeah, I'm going to click off. So, so great. You can now do Twitter and you can annoy me with a 30 second video and yay, you can even embed that annoying video on your website. I, I, I find it a little counterintuitive. Okay. What about this is counterintuitive? You can now search Google for your Twitter updates. Well, this is actually a news story that was a news story a bunch of years ago, and then it wasn't a news story, and now it's back. Uh, because <laughs> they used to do this. Twitter used to have, uh, Google used to have a deal with Twitter for the fire hose, as they like to call it, for all that data. So I thought it was really interesting where they're saying, oh, well, our engineers need to work on this. And I'm like, you already have it. All you have to do is just roll out the old cards, and it'll all be fine. Um, but they're probably updating it because they'll want to do something special with it. Um, but again, this is, this is great. If Google can index my tweets, it's good for everybody involved. Why not? It's more information on the Internet. Uh, and real-time indexing of that, that's what Google's good at. So. Yeah, but I think there's one thing you have to be wary of is now what you tweet is even more searchable than it was before. Now you can Google it, and you can, I mean, so if you say some stupid stuff, I mean, you hear, you hear about this Kurt Schelling thing where people were picking on his daughter, and he completely exposed them, the, the trolls, and pretty much got them expelled from school because he exposed them for what the horrible things they were saying on Twitter. Either of you hear about this? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, mean, know, I say, I say yeah, kudos to him for defending his kid, and looking at the tools that are available to him. Did you, have you, did you hear about this, the Kurt Schelling one? No, I wasn't paying attention to it. Sorry. Oh, okay. I, I didn't see what, it. what do you think about this Google thing? What do you think about Google and Twitter in bed together? Well, well, like Howard said, I mean, okay. it's old, news, old news that's new again. Um, yes, Twitter was part of a, a Google search, and it came up, don't do that, it came up <laughs> in a Google search, and... Um, then they turned off the fire hose, and then suddenly everybody was clamoring, like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Now it's not being picked up anymore, and now it would be picked up again. I think, personally, I think that it's important. It's an important um, partnership because Twitter has become an important communication tool, and I think that um, Google is trying to deliver information. So it, it's a good marriage. It's a good partnership. And to the extent that the Twitter stream is being picked up by Google, for phrases, for, for keywords, for um, people. Uh, I think it helps optimize for a brand. Awesome. Let's thank our first sponsor, Howard. Well, I'd like to thank our first sponsor, which is Wistia. Today's show is sponsored by Wistia, which is a video hosting and analytics platform. It helps businesses get the most out of online video. Think about it this way. With the FCC net neutrality, Wistia can compete with some of the larger players and do the things like we use it here at phillytech.org. It's another way, it's another option versus other things that are out there. The data that Wistia provides, it helps us understand how our content is being consumed. And Wistia has a ton of resources to help people getting started with video. These are tutorials on lighting and editing, uh, choosing the right microphone, and they have a good community around it helping people get a little bit better. They also have a free version of their service that holds up to 50 videos. So what I want you to do is go over to phillytech.org and look at the sponsors page and or on the sidebar where it says Wistia. Click on that link so that they know that we sent you. It's a great product, good learning resources, and uh, really, really good people over there. So again, wistia.com is video hosting, and they can compete with the big guys thanks to net neutrality. Nice, nice tie-in. I, I called an audible for the tie-in. We called an audible, exactly. But and not audible, now. not the audiobooks, like the football play. Yeah, the audible's no not audio a sponsor books. yet. I'm working on that. I'm working audible's on that. not a sponsor yet, but we'll get there. We'll get there. So Man, do have picks for audible. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Facebook now has new tools for suicide prevention. I think this is a good thing. I think that you know anything that can prevent a suicide is always a positive. The problem is the algorithm, and um, what if someone isn't being suicidal, but the algorithm picks it up? But also, what 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 hurts that if if you weren't being suicidal, but for some reason the 
sound like you're being suicidal. Maybe you shouldn't talk that way. Because if the algorithm thinks you're suicidal, maybe some people that have brains behind them, you know, in them, would think you're being suicidal as well. So, I mean, I don't know. I think it's a good thing. What do you guys think? Are you going, Howard, or do you want me to go? <laughs> um, recently, I was able to attend a program at one of the local high schools. And the person who was leading the program asked the kids at the school um, how many of them knew somebody personally who had talked about committing suicide or had a family member. And when I tell you it was roughly 90% of the classroom, but I'm not kidding, and I was shocked. And um, I think suicide is one of those things, you know, you know, all generations have idiosyncrasies. I think in this generation, kids live their lives as if it's a video. And I don't know if people, kids, people recognize that you only go through life once. And suicide is a one-way street. You're not coming back. There's no new life that starts again. And it's, it's final. It's done. Um, it's not glamorous. You know, people talk about, you know, oh, they'll miss me when I'm gone. It's not glamorous. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I have been on Facebook where people have made comments, you know, about not wanting to do this anymore. And mm -hmm. I've jumped in and, and said, you know, are you okay? Because I think that's what we all should be doing for each other. I think that as human beings, we should be kind to each other. We should be looking out for each other. And I think, you know, to some extent, all of us should be doing this anyway. But I do applaud Facebook. Um, evidently what they're doing is, they are asking people if they feel that a friend may be in trouble to help this algorithm. They're not dependent entirely upon the algorithm. Mm -hmm. But what they're looking for is for people to report if they feel that someone is in jeopardy. And um, then they have specialists, um, psychologists, who can jump in and counsel and, and try to coach. So I, mm -hmm. think, I think that's a good step. And I mean, there's only so much you can expect Facebook to do, but I don't think that we meaning us, all of us, should be dependent upon Facebook to do that. I think that we need to look out for each other. Absolutely. Howard? Yeah, the one thing I want to add is um, they're actually, they're making it such that it's going to be very easy for you to, uh, if you see any post, to flag it. And in that flagging process, that then sends it over to a Facebook review team, and it's actually a team of people. So it is, they're actually going away from the algorithmic approach to it. So there's very little uh, artificial intelligence that's going to say, hey, it looks like you want to commit suicide this week. There's nothing like that. It's all based on how the community sees that person, notices things, mentions things, and then suggests it to the person in private. So it's not like they're going to see their posts or it's going to be public saying, you know, Facebook thinks that you want to commit suicide, like this page for the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. It's not that at all. They're doing it in a really, um, for lack of a better term, it's really a nice way. It's really a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it allows the person to stay private with it. It's not posting anything on their behalf. It's not even letting other people know, hey, six other people have flagged this as potentially this person thinks they're going to commit suicide. Like, It's not doing anything like that. Oh, yeah. It's keeping all that behind the scenes. It's also anonymizing who reported it. That's why they're putting that review step so that they don't want it to become a, a sense of bullying. Like To say, well, I'm going to start flagging all of your posts, posts Seth, as he's suicidal. They're actually going to look at it and say, no, it's not. And if I start reporting lots of people, they'll come back to me as a either as a cyber bully or as a troll. And uh, you know, mm -hmm. not my gig, not my gig. But again, if someone's really worried, there are humans throughout the process, any team to do it. So I think that's a really uh, it's a great step. I like what they're doing here. Yeah. So anyhow, if you are you need to talk to somebody and you need and you need some help, call one eight hundred two seven three eighty two fifty five. That's one thing I actually. Liked about each of these articles, they did post the National Suicide Prevention Hotline lifeline at the bottom of each of these articles. So if you need help, 1-800-273-8255. Hopefully we're cheering you up, though, because I'm making you want to live. But, you know, who knows? You know, but if you need help, call that number. On to a little bit of um, hack, well, I guess eh, it wasn't the best follow-up, but... um. Google Plus is kind of going away, but um, Google is still a social network. So 
I, when I first saw this headline, I immediately said, oh, come on, another one of these darn articles saying Google Plus is dead? Um, it isn't. It's being broken out and reformulated and rejiggered and remolded, and finally, I think the person who, only other person that was worth being in charge of Google Plus is now in charge of Google Plus. When Vic and Gotra left, I always thought Bradley Horowitz would have been the next reasonable successor to Vic and Gondotra. And pretty much, they're splitting it up a little bit, but um, Bradley Horowitz is now the VP of Streams and Photos, which means like the, the stream in Google Plus and the Photos aspect, which I think is really awesome. and could potentially take on um, Instagram if they really work at it. But um, what do you guys think? I mean, I don't really think Google Plus is dead per se, but what do you think? What, Jody, you're really big on this. What do you think? Oh, I don't think it's dead at all. I think what they're doing is they're redefining how they think of it, um, and they're going to be focusing on marketing photos and Hangouts as their own product, which is fine because they're optimizing it. You know, that's what they do. That's what Google does. Um, We're but hang out right now. Yeah, I know, but I, I but I. Personally, I, I like Google+. Plus. Um, it has evolved quite a bit since it started. Um, a lot of the things that they... I mean, Hangouts on Air weren't even existent. Remember, mm -hmm. you could only have like a Hangout and up to 10 people and the world's longest Hangout. And, oh, I miss those days. I know, right? Like the, the, the early pioneer days. And then like you had to get an invitation. So it has evolved. Um, I think that to some extent it's... To me, um, in some ways, it's better than Facebook, but in some ways, I don't think it's as good as Facebook. Facebook is more, um, I use it for people that I know, you know, mm -hmm. um, that I've met. Um, w once I meet them through Google+, I might friend them on Facebook. It's a different, more intimate relationship, but I'll tell you what, I learn a lot of information on oh, Google+, yeah. and I see a lot of really cool stuff, and um, I, I like it. I, I hope it doesn't you know, go away. But I don't think, my impression is that that's not what this is. It's just redefining how they interpret it. What do you think, Howard? Yeah, Howard. I think that um, it's interesting the way that they're redefining it. Um, I'm curious to see if they keep the Google Plus brand around. That's something where um, there's been lots of press about it. Maybe Google comes out at the next Google I.O. and talks about what that future is. Google Hangouts is a great, great product. The Photos product is probably one of the best photo products out there. Um, the way that it integrates with mobile, the way that you can really bring things around. It is a, these are really, really amazing products. And it's a shame that there's a little bit of that, uh, hey, we're competing with Facebook. Because I think they serve very, very different purposes. Mm -hmm. So I'm really curious to see where they go with this. Um, and yes, when I saw the headline, I instantly went, oh, great, more clickbait on you know Google Plus is dead. Let's pronounce it there. I don't think it's dead. What I think that's going to happen is some of the lesser used functions in Google Plus that are in, like if you go on your sidebar of Google Plus where it has different things, some of those things I think are going to disappear because no one's using it. Uh, remember, Google is a data-driven company. So if they have data that says nobody uses this particular product, they're going to get rid of it. If they have data that says a large segment of people use the Photos product, which they do, we're going to make that bigger. We're going to amplify that. Same thing with Hangouts and same thing with Streams. So by saying these are the three products, they've actually given it some definition so that those products can live a much more fruitful life as opposed to all being jumbled together in this thing called Google+. Yeah, I totally agree. I hopefully, hopefully it'll be for the best. So anyhow, let's just thank Flywheel. Howard, take it away. Oh, Flywheel. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Flywheel, Man. Flywheel, why aren't you hosting this WordPress platform for this one client that refuses to take advice. Um, Flywheel, what they do is they're a managed WordPress hosting platform, and it's built for designers and creative agencies. Um, they make it really, really simple to build and manage and launch client sites um, all from their dashboard, which they built. Um, they do backups every night. Their load times are great. They have security that's specifically for WordPress, and they have a great support team so that when you have an issue, they actually know WordPress as opposed to saying, well, uh, figure it out on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, they help lots of designers, and I'll tell you, I have some clients that they don't take the advice where their site's getting abused or attacked a lot, mm -hmm. and they just insist on getting the cheapest hosting account that they can find and not running backups and not doing any security, and when their sites get hacked and taken down and they say well what can we do and when the option is well you actually need a good platform to have your site 
Um, they don't take that advice. They should be on Flywheel. That'll make things a lot easier. So again, what I want you to do, go to phillytech.org and look at the sponsors page, and you will see Flywheel there. Click on our link there. That lets Flywheel know that we sent you, and that really helps out the network. So again, Flywheel, manage WordPress hosting. Go check them out. And I love this guy's Nerf, um, Nerf battle axe. Yeah. <laughs> it's very, very classy. I will very classy. And we run on Flywheel, and I, I host all my clients' websites on Flywheel, except for one. He, he, the one person's holding out on me, but Flywheel is incredible. They're a great company. So, what have, you guys, have you guys heard of this company called v Verb? Apparently, it's a mobile competitor to Google. Well, Anyone? it's a mobile search engine. It's a mobile search engine, but it's an, an appetized. It's appetized. Have you tried it? I can't. It's an iOS only. Wah, wah. There you go. One more reason to use Apple. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of it, Howard? Have you tried it? I, I haven't tried it. From what I looked at, um, it looks interesting. This is one of those things where on the Internet, trying to take on the 800-pound gorilla is... Yeah. Something that sounds really great in a PowerPoint presentation, but doesn't really work in terms of execution. So I, I kind of, I'm at the stage of my life where I'm a little bit exhausted from trying all of the different things that keep coming out. So I tend to hedge a little bit, wait to see what it, what happens. And you know, they're not a new company. They're actually a company that's been around for about four years in terms of their development, in terms of doing things. So I do have my hopes out there. But I don't think we're really going to see a lot of uptick on it. Um, on iOS, just the nature of how it works, there's going to be some issues that are going to make it that, that they have to sort of integrate with all these other apps and do different things. I actually think it would be easier to do all the work that they're doing on Android. So I'd be mm -hmm. really curious to hope that we see an Android version of it as well. I think they'll it actually get more soon. uptick. It is coming soon. But again, I think I'm going to kind of hedge my bets until we see both iOS and Android versions in the market, even though I'm an iOS guy. But I like some of that cross-pollination to occur. Absolutely. I totally agree. I mean, it looks interesting, but remember, what was it? Curl? Curl? What was that one that ex-Googler did? Oh, cool, uh, cool that was C-U-I-L? Yeah, cool. Yeah, what happened to that? It died. Exactly. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, start up you have don't make you it. Bing, and you have half a Yahoo, which is mostly run by Bing, and you have Google. That's, and you, no, 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 you have DuckDuckGo, and you have a few others out there like Leco and um, others out there that kind of are on the outskirts for different, they have different like feature offerings. But pretty much the 100-pound gorilla is Google. So anyhow, this is good news. Twitter will crack down on serial trolls by tracking their phone number. So Twitter is going to crack down on serial trolls by trolling them, essentially, and finding their phone number and tracking them down and saying, stop being trolls, pretty much. Awesome. And Yay. I think it's great. I think it's great news. Let's I'm give them a round of applause. I don't like trolls. So I... I but, I mean, it's, everyone has trouble with trolls. I mean, you know, Jody has trouble with trolls. I have trouble with trolls. Howard, do you have any trolls? Um, not that I'll admit to. Um, <laughs> the thing that I think is really interesting about this, uh, Twitter came out and said, we have a problem, and we're going to start fixing this. This is one way, and probably one in a series of ways that we're going to hear about from Twitter, to crack down on it. Again, this is the part that says, if you want to have many different Twitter accounts or keep signing up for accounts, then you're going to have to cycle through phone numbers just as well because, you know, they're going to start using that a little bit more seriously. Now, that said, the downside of this is as follows. Uh, Twitter is going to have my phone number, which they already have. It's not such a big deal. But there are some people who say, look, I don't want my data out there in lots of different places. And a, mm -hmm. a mobile phone is a very, very personal device. So... Now a Twitter hack, presumably, um, which already has my phone number, so I'm really not that worried about it. But it's just more places where my data is. And um, if they're going to routinely check it and authenticate by it, I'm 
hoping that we don't have any issues and people doing things like, oh, I'm going to use Howard's cell phone number to authenticate someone else's account to try to gain that. Presumably it's going to send me a text message, but that's just another version of Twitter spam because I might get a text from Twitter that says, please authenticate your account and go, yes, that's me. And now I've lost my cell phone number to someone else. You can also get Google Voice. I mean, I, I use Google Voice for those things because I don't like yeah. to give up my... my, my cause Google Voice I can trash if I absolutely have to. I don't want to at this point because Google Voice is... Sorry, I'm still looking at Howard here. Um, slacking, on the, slacking on the switching here. Um, but um, Google Voice is wonderful because it, it's not your cell phone number. So if, God forbid, you eventually had to trash it, you could. Whereas trashing a mobile number is a lot harder to do, so... So what do you think about this? Um, you know, I'm I'm not a proponent of trolls. <laughs> I, I dislike oh, trolls. Yeah. Um, I look if if you're using it for nefarious purposes, I feel that yeah, they should get your phone number. Um, as far as my phone number goes, if there's you know some kind of a expectation of privacy, uh, hopefully there is, then I have no problem with it. Um, you know, when, when Twitter first started, there were a lot of people jumping on and opening multiple accounts. And in order to do that, they had to have multiple email addresses. I don't see I don't this being much different. I just wish that, I just hope that if you need multiple accounts, you can use the same number. It's just a matter of Google's, um, Twitter's going to say, hey, what are you using these for? You know, I mean... There's, there's those things where like there are apps out there that say you can only use your number once, and that's really annoying. But if you say you can use it as many times as you want, but it might throw up a flag, that might be an issue because there's reasons to have multiple accounts, different projects, different, different, different personas. I mean, I have, I have probably 15 different Twitter accounts. Not, I, mean, I don't use all of them. Well, anymore. but the I'm big saying, thing to note is this: these secu- yeah. these measures are in place for for when they detect trolling. So if you're someone who is trolling someone and they shut down your account and you go try to open up another account, they're going to look at that previous phone number and say, anybody who tries to open another account with that phone number, mm-hmm. we're not going to let you do it because you've been trolling. So I don't think, Seth, it's going to affect you or affect you of multiple accounts because presumably you don't have multiple accounts so that you can have 14 of your 15 Twitter accounts be trolling accounts. As long as you have the one that's like, this one's safe, and the other 14 are my troll accounts. Um, as long as you're not trolling, I don't think you're going to you know, have an, have well, an I issue. Which I haven't seen I you do. Not. I mean, you, you stopped that at least three weeks ago. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Awesome. So, what, so this is a great Medium article um, where the headline is, why Twitter should not algorithmically curate the timeline. I would be so opposed to Twitter algorithm. Actually, I wouldn't really care. Actually, I'm going to think of it. I wouldn't really care. I can't even look at the timeline. I have my own timeline. These lists. But um, what do you guys think about it being algorithmically more Facebook-like? I think if they gave the user an option, and by giving the user an option, that lets the casual user select, hey, what's kind of bubbling to the top? Mm-hmm. If you know, those kinds of things, I remember when Facebook used to be entirely chronological. And now their algorithm has been tweaked over time that I don't really mind that it's not completely chronological. With Twitter, I, well, it, there are certain things where it's like, where was that thing? It bugs me. But it bugs me a lot less than seeing um, effectively a version of the Twitter fire hose on my feed and Facebook. On Twitter, I'm expecting it. So we have the tools in place. The power users have the tools because they're there. Um, you know, whether we're using uh, different apps that allow us to break things up or we're using lists, we're going to use more features to do that. So mm-hmm. if Twitter said, and this is a, a very Twitter thing to do, which is give the user an option. Do you want to see kind of our best of or do you want to see the chronological list? Um, again, they're trying to gear towards how can we show advertising in a much more pleasing way so the curation is part of that how do we make your feed really awesome? Mm-hmm. Shelly, what do you think? Curation or non-curation? I, I hate the idea of curation. I don't like it on Facebook either. Personally, I like it the way it used to be where you had this stream of consciousness and if you wanted to go back and see something, you could because it was all by timeline. 
I don't need somebody deciding what is important to me and what isn't important to me. The whole idea of edge rank, you know, you get to see the stuff where there's lots of posts on it. People who are social media addicts like us, they play it, you know, and they'll have a bunch of people, they'll, they'll tag them and they'll try to get them to comment on their post. I don't, I don't use Twitter that way. I think it would be the first step towards death. I, I just totally think it's a bad idea. What do you I think, agree. Seth? I agree. Yeah. Sure you've, it's Howard's gotten the round of applause before, but you never got the round of applause, so there's your round of applause. I didn't notice that I didn't get it, but now that I know that I didn't get it, I'm really hurt. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry. All right. So anyhow, let's thank Zoho Mail before we get to our picks of the week. Zoho Mail? What's Zoho Mail? Well, I'm glad you asked. Oh, God, that was the worst uh, transition ever. Um, we really <laughs> want to thank our sponsor, Zoho Mail. And it is professional e email that's designed for your business. It's got business features, business security, and it's got the convenience of being web-based as well as mobile-based. So the best thing that you can do, learn more about Zoho Mail and sign up for a free ad-free, that means no ads, free as in free beer, free pizza, but a free ad-free account for up to 10 users by going to our site, phillytech.org, look at the sponsors page and go for Zoho Mail or in the show notes to the, uh, to the show today, click on the link in the show notes. Again, Zoho Mail, great, uh, great service, very, very reliable and very flexible. That's one of the things that I've been impressed by because we do use it at phillytech.org. Um, our email accounts through this are on Zoho Mail and I love its flexibility because I can actually use it with my other email accounts and kind of mix and mingle. Mix and mingle them. He's, he's saying Howard just disappeared and mix and mingle them and we thank Zoho Mail. Thank you Zoho hopefully, Mail. <laughs> hopefully Howard will come back. He's frozen. He's frozen. They can't see. But, um, <laughs> yeah, he's frozen. Poor frozen. Yeah, it is pretty cold out there. It is cold out there. Apparently, he froze. <laughs> <laughs> Four hours. Like, where did I go? Anyhow, I guess I'll have to wing his pick of the week as well. But anyhow, my pick of the week is Twitter finally came out with a Twitter plugin for WordPress. Uh, uh, nothing really shiny. Nothing really. Um, Steph, you froze too. I froze. No, I'm yeah, alive. you were frozen for a while. I couldn't see anything. You were frozen for a while, too. <laughs> all right, we're all back. I finished Zoho Mail for you, Howard. Did I freeze during Zoho Mail? Yeah, Did towards you? the end, you froze. Awesome. <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> anyhow, this is what we do when we happen. All right, anyhow. So there's an official Twitter plugin for WordPress. It pretty much enables your, your, your WordPress to interact with Twitter a whole lot more holistically. It's the official plugin, so it actually gives you the official link to tweet pages. I don't know. I think it's kind of neat. Are you Jordy, using what? What's that? Are you using it on anything? I'm using it on all my sites. Cool. Okay. Cool. What's um, local scope, Jenny? Okay, so this is from the category of cool or creepy, where you know you can vote which way you think it is. Okay, so local scope it's kind of like a guide of what's happening in social media near wherever you are. And um, what happens is when you pull it up, it shows you a little map, and then it goes through um, things that happen nearby. And they're like sometimes they're like, most of the time, it's people that you don't know. So um, it could, head's creepy. Well, it's, it's cool or creepy. It could be cool. Like, for example, like where I am right now, there's um, a trailer manufacturer, there's a, a church nearby. It tells you what's going on there. Um, that's through um, Google. Then you've got Foursquare. It tells you a couple places nearby. Um, Panoramio, if people took photographs, panoramic pictures, you can see what was the most recent pictures that were taken nearby. Um, it's got Yelp reviews. You can also have reminders. It connects with your friends on Facebook. Um, any tweets that are in the nearby area. Um, any YouTube videos. In this case, there's a couple houses that were posted for sale. Um, there's wikis, whatever's, um, and Wikimapia, Instagram, Wikimapia. yeah, right. Instagram pictures that were taken locally, Flickr pictures taken locally, Picasa pictures taken locally, um, and anyway, it goes on and on and on and on. But um, it's it's interesting 
And like I said, it's either like really cool or really creepy, depending upon what camp you're in. I think it's creepy. Oh my god. I got two noise effects in one show. <laughs> I've, I've been trying to use that one forever. So, on that note, what is testmy.net? Test All right. Well, traditionally, if you were doing a speed test, you would go to a speed test, and it was typically run by. Um, actually, it was run by your ISP, and it was also flash based. So these are two things that aren't typically good because if you want to measure your ISP. You don't want to use Flash to do it, and you don't want to use your ISP to do it. You actually want to use a third party that is neutral. So in the, th in the subject of net neutrality, I wanted to pick testmy.net as a non-Flash version of speed testing. So testmy.net, you have a couple options. You can test downloads, you can test uploads, and you can also, with a, you can sign up for an account, and what it will do is it will test your connection many times over a span of time. So for example, if you're saying things to, like if you say, hey, my internet speed always goes down around 8 o'clock at night. If you know that that's happening, well, you might say, hey, my speeds are going down. Your provider might say, oh no, we just tested your connection and you're getting the full connection. You can then show them these reports that say, hi, I'm showing you exactly where the problems are. And they're Ooh, your reports as opposed nice. to their reports. So it's a really nice product. Again, Free as in free beer, love it, sign up for it, have a great time, have at it, and uh, if you are having issues, at least you know. For example, I knew that before this started, my broadband that I paid for was barely getting me one megabit up, Ooh. and I was getting 15 down, but one megabit up, and that was something that I went, oh, well, I pay for more than that, and I'm not getting it, so... Again, one of those things where typically I do get it, but tonight, not getting it. Uh, that's awesome. So, what is it? Testmy.net, right? Testmy.net. Good one. Nice find. Howard's, Howard's at the gizwiz of... Um... <laughs> Thank you, Howard. Thank oh. you, Howard. And so this wraps up our wonderful show this week. Uh, we want to hear from you guys. So you can email us at info at phillytech.org. You can tweet us at phillytech underscore org. Or you can call us. You can call us. John Colley. Remember, Joe, remember the, the cricket yep. guy? Yep. He's doing John, a... call us. Tell us about cricket. Please. Explain it to us again. It was, just great, it was such a great call. He exp Howard, you, on a A2S, and the, the, you know, may it rest in peace. Um, not dead. On a, oh, it's, it's, it's being re resurrected. It will be. It will be at some point. Um, if Jody has anything to say about it. Um, but on the previous incarnation, um, John Colley from Great Britain uh, gave us like it was a two-minute synopsis of what, how crickets played. It was pretty funny in the British accent. So anyhow, call 908-758-3248 and leave us a voicemail. That's 908-758-3248. Leave us a voicemail. We'll play it on the show. So if you want to hear your voice on the show, please do. If you don't want to hear your voice on the show, but you want to have a voice in the show, figuratively speaking, info at phillytech.org or tweet us at phillytech underscore org or find us on Facebook as phillytech.org. I think that's what it is. Yes. That is what it is. So thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. All right. Good night, everyone. Live long and prosper. Oh, yeah. Let's go that way and let's go over here. All right. Do it one more time. Yeah. All right. Call us to me. Huh. <laughs>